Oh. Okay, so only to answer your question, Pamela. So there are some results for the transport equation, controllability of the transport equation in um, from the boundary in several space dimensions. Again, the time has to be large enough, but also you have some geometrical conditions on the part of the boundary where you are controlling. So it's more or less the same kind of results that you have for the wave equation when you want to control the wave equation in Rd with d larger than one. Okay, so you have, uh, for example, this is omega. You cannot put in any case uh, the control in a small part of the boundary. This is not enough because you need some geometrical condition that says that the rays of the optic has to um, cross the control region. So I'm going to change of color. So here is the control region, okay? So have to meet the control region. Uh, but if I put only this, this small part, you have like a ray that stays here. So you cannot control the equation. So you need to put a, a, a larger part of, of the boundary. Okay, something like that. Uh, such a ray is not trapped in this. Uh, so you, all the rays, goes and then reflect. So they are touching the, uh, the region, the red region where the control is. So that's, that happens for the transport equation and also for the wave equation when you are in, in dimension larger than, than one, okay? Also, there are some results, uh, but they are very recent by Morgan Moran, say, and I, I don't remember whom, three people, uh, that they control in the interior, but they move the, the control region and they have some results for the transport equation there. That's what I found is done, okay? Well, I, I go back to the heat equation. So we were discussing the controllability of the heat equation. Here I am in the one dimensional case to illustrate some of the techniques and of the results that we have in this, this uh, case that is much more easy than the general case, okay? So we already said that the heat equation is not exactly controllable because we have this regularizing effect that after an instant of time, after zero, your solution is much more regular. So it is not expected to have exact controllability for every initial and final data. Maybe you find one initial data and one final data that you can go from one to the other exactly at time capital T, but in general, you cannot do that, okay? So we were discussing about the approximate controllability so I recall you the notion of approximate controllability. So here I have my uh, control heat equation and I am acting by means of H, a control with support in a small set omega of uh, 
zero pi. So here is the support of my control. So we are going to say that the system or the equation is approximately controllable if for every initial data and every final data and for every positive epsilon, I can go close enough to uh, my target point. So I am going to be at a distance less or equal than epsilon of my target y1. And here I start from y0 and my control H drives close enough, enough to y1. So in general, the notion of approximate controllability is that the set of uh, reachable states starting from y0 at time capital T is dense in L2 of zero pi with controls in L2 of zero T times little omega, my control set, my control region. So a much beautiful drawing here. So that means that I can, can go in a ball of radius epsilon around Y1, okay? So we were discussing that uh, the approximate controllability is also related to the adjoint system. In this case, the adjoint system of the heat equation is a backward heat equation. So here we have this sign plus instead of the minus because we are backward in time, okay? So this equation is defined and is well posed for uh, initial datum at capital T and it goes, let's say, to uh, zero or to minus infinity, okay? So the unique continuation property that is equivalent to approximate controllability is the following one, is that if I have a solution to the adjoint system that vanishes at my control region times zero T, so here you have a parabolic cylinder over small omega. So here is omega, here is capital T. So if my solution to the adjoint system vanishes in this small rectangle, that means that in fact, the initial datum was zero and therefore all the solution was zero. So in this situation, if this happens, we say that uh, we can prove in fact that the original system is approximately controllable. So we proved last day that this was in fact true and here is more or less the proof. So we took a um, datum in the orthogonal to uh, the reachable states and we prove that at the end, if we have this uh, uh, point at the orthogonal to the reachable states, we are going to get that this um, uh, inner product in L2 of uh, the cylinder is equal to zero. So that means, and this happens for every H in L2 of uh, zero T times uh, little omega. Then that means that V, the solution to the adjoint system 
vanishes in all my uh, cylinder or almost everywhere, okay? And if we have the unique continuation property, that means that Vt is equal to zero, and then we got that the reachable set of uh, starting from zero of the heat equation is dense in L2. So now we are going to prove this unique continuation property, but in the uh, uh, one dimensional case. Okay, so uh, remember that in um, the uh, one dimensional situation, we can uh, write the uh, Fourier series corresponding to the solution of uh, this equation. So in, in, in the case of the adjoint equation, this solution is given by uh, this expression because uh, this is an homogeneous um, backward heat equation. So we only have uh, the, let's say, the participation of the initial datum, okay? So what we do is we estimate the uh, Fourier coefficients of the initial datum, and then you obtain a family of ordinary differential equations with V and T as initial datum. And then you can solve this uh, family of ordinary differential equations and you see that uh, precisely V solution of this adjoint equation has to be uh, this Fourier series. So uh, we need to prove that if V is equal to zero in my uh, is small cylinder based in my control set, then the initial datum is equal to zero. So this, that, that is my objective, okay? So, um, we recall that uh, this way of writing the solution allows to prove that in fact, V is analytic in time. So we can extend the solution to minus infinity zero. Recall that it is a backward equation. So in principle, it is defined from capital T to zero, but, but then I extend it to uh, minus infinity. And then this analytic extension is going to vanish again in uh, the same small set omega, but now in the extension to uh, minus infinity. And then you can see, then you have this sum that is equal to zero. So if I suppose that the first component of uh, my uh, Fourier series is, equal, is different from zero, I can uh, put it in the, in the left hand side so this is equal to all the series starting from n equal to two um, everything is happening in my small set omega okay and then i i divide by the uh, exponential of uh, minus t 
capital T minus T. So I get this expression here and I pass to the limit when small t goes to minus infinity, okay? So uh, this is going to be uh, negative. So this goes to zero. And then we get that in this situation, this is equal to zero, okay? But we know that uh, the sinus of x is not identically zero on all my uh, support set, uh, little omega. So that means that my Fourier coefficient needs to be equal to zero. And inductively, we get that every Fourier coefficient has to be equal to zero. So I have V1 and then I get that for some n, Vn has to be equal to zero. And I proceed to prove that B, Vn plus one has to be equal to zero. In the same way, I just prove that V1 is equal to zero. So we have the unique continuation property for the heat equation, okay? So uh, we uh, remember that for the uh, ordinary differential equation, we prove uh, an uh, observability inequality for the adjoint equation. So uh, we may ask what can we obtain in the case of the heat equation if we have uh, this kind of observability inequality. So the result that we get for the um, heat equation is the following. So we know that the uh, heat equation is not exactly controllable. We just prove that at least in the one dimensional setting, the heat equation is approximately uh, approximately controllable, but now we can ask if it is controllable to zero. So zero uh, is a particular solution. Again, uh, you have uh, a steady state at zero. So it's one of the, the, the possible uh, objectives that are much more interesting, okay? So uh, what uh, we can obtain now is the null controllability of the heat equation if and only if we have this observability inequality for the adjoint uh, equation, okay? So what does that mean? That means that we can observe from small omega and along all the interval zero t, the uh, data, but here is not a capital T, is at zero, okay? So in some sense, we are saying that we can observe the solution of, of the adjoint equation once uh, a capital T time have uh, passed. Because recall that we are in a backward equation. So we are from capital T to zero. Yes. So, okay, this observability inequality uh, is going to be important. Observe that, okay, here we have also, if we have this inequality, we have also the 
unique continuation property. Why? Because it's, if V vanishes in this um, in this set, so is if this is zero, we are going to have V of zero x equal to zero. And then we have a backward unique continuation property for the heat equation. That means that V of T X is equal to zero for all T uh, larger than zero, okay? So here is a backward equation. So I am going back to capital T. So V of capital T is going to be zero. So if we have uh, this uh, observability inequality, we are going to have the approximate controllability and we are going to have also the null controllability, okay? Why? We have again, this argument that we did for the ordinary differential equations where we were able to define a, a functional and to prove that this uh, functional has a minimum, okay? So in this situation, Situation, if we have the observability inequality, we have that this functional is uh, has a minimum. Why? Okay, so this functional is uh, going is continuous, uh, and uh, it is okay. It's a uh, um, here we have a square function and here is linear on V. So if I have uh, the observability inequality, that means that it exists an epsilon, an epsilon no, a C positive such that the integral from zero T over little omega V square we'd see here if you want, is greater and equal than the integral on zero. Now here is not zero t, is zero pi, zero pi of v square zero x dx, okay? So this functional is convex, is continuous. Here is a, a, a linear part. So this inequality implies that J of VT is greater or equal than one half this omega V square DX DT and by Schwartz inequality, this is uh, greater than minus one over C, the norm of Y zero in L2. And here I can put uh, this, uh, this uh, square root of this term, okay? V square, one half. So what we have is that when Vt goes to infinity, this uh, functional J goes to infinity, okay? And then it is coercive. So J is continuous. convex and coercive. So it is the same that I proved for the ODE, the ordinary differential equation. So in this case, under this situation, we have the existence of a minimum, okay? So 
I can prove that from the Euler, Euler condition at the minimum, so differentiating or taking the Gato derivative of this functional, you, you can see, you can prove that you have a null control precisely taking the solution of the adjoint equation that starts at the minimizer and you put the solution corresponding to this minimizer of j of vt and you get that y of capital T is equal to zero, okay? So uh, it is important to prove uh, this kind of inequality if uh, you want to prove the null controllability of the adjoint equation, okay? So um, there are several techniques to uh, prove uh, this inequality. And one of them are Kahneman inequalities. So Kahneman inequalities are weighted inequalities that relate the a differential operator, so in general, with the local weighted norm of the solution. So they, they were uh, constructed by Kahneman in 1939 to uh, show the uniqueness uh, of the solutions with uh, of to some partial differential equations with smooth coefficients on subsets of R, R2. And uh, nowadays, this kind of inequality, so these weighted inequalities that relates the differential operator with the local weighted norm of the solution uh, have been generalized and are very useful for inverse problems, so if one, some of you know some inverse problems, this is a technique used to solve this kind of problems and also for controllability, okay? So I want to tell you what kind of function we need uh, for the Kahneman inequalities of the heat equation. So you have your uh, zero pi interval and you have your small region omega. So your weight, okay, so I, now I'm going to construct the weight, but it's related with a function eta zero. And what you are doing is to put the maximum or all the, uh, um, uh, how do you say? Okay, the maximum of, of eta zero is in the little set omega, but you can put also another extremal point. So if maybe you can do something like that, okay? Sometimes you need it, okay? But what you are saying if is that the derivative of eta zero prime is not zero outside, uh, let's say zero pi is equal to large omega. So it is not zero outside my small control set, okay? So this is one of the uh, situations you have with eta zero. So, Eta zero has to be of class, say, let's say C2. And uh, the other condition you need, it is always non-zero. And okay, in my drawing, 
I put that eta zero uh, has a value zero on the boundary. This is not necessary. The only thing I need is that the normal derivative of eta zero, okay, so here is uh, only uh, the derivative of eta zero with respect to x is negative on the on the boundary okay so this is uh, this way so we are going down so this is precisely the drawing drawing of uh, the um, the the function eta zero okay so in general so in rn uh, Fursikov Iman, and Immanuelov in, in, I think it's a paper of 95, prove that uh, if you have an open and bounded set of class C2 and you have a small open set and you can put also a small ball inside a small set omega, then there, is, there exists this function that behaves precisely as I said to you. So it is maybe here uh, greater is positive in omega, the normal derivative is uh, negative on the boundary, of course, and the gradient, the absolute value or the norm of the gradient is strictly positive. So outside this small ball of radius delta that is contained in my set omega, okay? Um, so, if you have this uh, eta zero, you can construct uh, some weights uh, <clears throat> that are going to allow to prove uh, the kind of observability that gives at the end the observability inequality. So the proof of this observability inequality is not trivial but here is more or less the way you can prove it. So, ah, I don't want that. Okay, so you define some alpha that is a function that depends on x and t. So you can see here, I have, this is a constant, okay? And here I put uh, the, the same part, is this than this, but I am I am adding this eta zero of x, and I am dividing by t times capital T minus t. So, uh, what kind of peculiarities I have with this alpha? Well, this alpha is always positive. Okay. It is never zero on X. And you will have that it, go, it goes to infinity as T goes to zero and as T goes to capital T. So that means that in fact, the inverse of uh, this uh, weight that I am taking the uh, exponential of alpha xt. So if I take the inverse, it's going to be zero. When I go to uh, zero and to capital T. So what I am going to do is I am going to put this rho to minus one together with the solution to my, my adjoint heat equation, okay? So with this weight, I am uh, not taking into account the uh, datum 
at zero and at capital T because they are going to be nullified by this weight, okay? Also, you're going to need this C that uh, is appears when you take derivatives of your exponential of alpha x of t. So this is going to appear several times when you way, uh, work with this uh, equation. Okay, so what is the Karlamann inequality? So if you have the adjoint equation, uh, but with a, a non-homogeneous adjoint equation with F0 in L2, you uh, can uh, introduce that weight that is rho to minus S. So you have two um, uh, Here you have lambda that appears here, okay? And here you're going to have S because you are going to take rho to the minus two S, okay? So you can prove uh, this kind of inequality, okay? So rho to the minus two S times S lambda squared C, so C is this function I have here that uh, appears when I take the derivative of this exponential, okay? And you're going to have S cube lambda square C cube V square. So all that is going to be least or equal, of, of course, I have a term that depends on the on my right hand side, but I have this term that is very important because we have the estimate with some weight, but but this weight is bounded below, okay? of v square over my little set omega. So if f0 is equal to zero, we are close to the observability inequality I want to prove. And uh, why is it this? Because we have some lower and upper bounds of the weight I have. So this rho to the minus two S, okay. So you can bound it from below when you are far from zero and far from capital T. So this is important, okay. You can obtain a bound from below, okay? And you have an upper bound on all the, 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 the domain, zero T times little omega, or zero T times large omega, okay? So what does that mean? That means that it, our Karleman inequality, allows to prove, so here I can put, because this is uh, for uh, my parameters larger than E0 and lambda larger than lambda zero. So I put some constant S and lambda. So here I'm going to have a very large constant. So if you want M, times zero T times small omega V square, okay? So you have a very large constant here. And then you have that this term that, so you are integrating from zero to T 
So over omega S cube lambda four C cube V square E to the minus, so rho to the minus U S. Okay, so this part is just bounded below by, by this constant where you are far from uh, uh, zero and capital T, okay? So you can bound this is greater or equal than the integral from T4 to three T4 over omega of the same, okay? Because you are taking a smallest region of integration, okay? So you can bound that. And then you do classical energy estimate. What are classical energy estimate? These are very easy. You have this function. Now it is equal to zero. If I have V zero, I can do the same. Just multiply by V and integrate. So you multiply and you have one half of the derivative with respect to T of V square integrated over omega minus Vx square integrating right parts is equal to zero, okay? So then you can see that the if you if you evaluate from uh, so you get that the derivative with respect to t of this integral v square is larger or equal than zero okay and then you have that uh, the integral over omega of v square at, for example, t over four is greater or equal than the integral of z. Here I am evaluated, evaluating in zero, okay? And then this is bounded by this integral, and then you get the observability inequality putting this together. Okay, so I'm not proving for you uh, the Karleman inequalities, but I just give you the idea of what you have to do. Okay, in fact, what you have to do is to uh, use the weight rho minus s, put it in my equation, do a change of variables, see what equations, what equation um, solves rho to the minus s times v, and then you have to integrate by parts and the, uh, and you have to estimate uh, the norm of this solution is, is, you have a lot of integration by parts to be done and you have to work a lot there and to do smart calculations, but at the end, you are going to be able to prove this inequality. So to do, if you want to see, uh, okay, at the end, I'm, I'm going to give a, a list of references and I will tell you where you can find a, an, let's say, easy way to read this result, okay? So, okay, so here is, are some numerics done by Franck Boyer. So here is the uh, uncontrolled heat equation, okay? With uh, initial data, the sinus to the 10 of pi x, and here I am in the in the 
instead of being in the zero pi interval, I am in the zero one interval. So, okay, so it's a small uh, difference, but you have, this is the solution. So at time t equal to one, the solution is not zero, okay? And then you have all this region, literal omega is that. So you are controlling here. And what you get is that uh, at time uh, t equal to one, you have the solution is zero. So this, these numerics were done by Frank Boyer. Okay. So now uh, we are going to discuss a little about the uh, boundary control of a parabolic equation. So if we have, uh, let's say we want to control our equation, but uh, we want to act on the boundary. So we have, uh, in fact, several possibilities, but the idea is to show you a different one. So one of the questions we can do is uh, to use the Carleman inequality as before. And what do you have to do is remember the extension method, okay? So I can put to extend my domain. So here is zero and here, I don't know, to some uh, epsilon minus epsilon. Yes, and you can put your, uh, let's say your control region here and here you can also produce your Kahneman weight, your eta zero. So you know that you can control uh, from this little set omega and you control, but the equation in minus epsilon Z P pi, okay? So you have a uh, controlled equation in uh, a set omega, but you are from minus epsilon to pi, okay? Here you have y bar equal to zero, but in minus epsilon and x equal to pi, and you put the initial data to be y hat zero of x, where y hat zero of x is equal to y zero of x if x is in zero pi and zero outside. So here you can control to zero because I just give you an idea of the observability inequality when you control in an, uh, in an internal set, okay? And then you can take y equal to y hat, but restricted to zero pi. So what are you going to obtain? So this solution is going to be a time capital T equal to zero. So the restriction is going to solve what? Y T minus Y x x equal to zero because this function is equal to zero outside zero pi. I will have y of zero equal to y hat at zero. Okay, so this is going to be my control. Okay, so this is one way of proving the controllability when I act on the boundary, because I have this result when I act in the interior. But now I'm going to show you another technique 
to control the heat equation. So again, this is of use in several uh, equations, but mainly in the case of we one dimensional equation. So what are we going to do? So we are going to consider the operator minus Laplacian on zero pi with homogeneous Dirichlet conditions. So here we can construct a basis of L2 of zero pi that is given by the uh, sinus of chi of kx, okay? So here is a basis as we used before of uh, L2 of zero pi. And uh, since they are uh, eigenfunctions of the Dirichlet Laplacian, the eigenvalues are k squared. Okay? So again, you can write down the uh, Fourier series corresponding to these uh, eigen functions for every uh, y in L2 of zero pi, you can write down the uh, corresponding Fourier series. Okay, so if we want to control this uh, heat equation, so now we are acting by means of the control on the boundary. We already know a way to solve the problem, but I want to give you another technique to do that. So now for some reasons, I have to work on the dual to H10. So this one is H minus one. Okay, and I want to see that there exists a control V in L2 of zero T, such that the solution at time capital T is equal to zero, okay? So if I want to do that, I can see just uh, taking the Fourier series, that uh, if we have uh, this control, then we are able to write this equality, okay? Uh, using the Fourier series, okay? So uh, we can see that, uh, so here, so, Okay, so this, this thing, okay, is, is a family of numbers. So given y zero, you can estimate these uh, terms, okay? So you have a family for every k, you can estimate that because y zero in L2, no, in H minus one is given. Okay, so you only have to do the duality product with this E2 minus K squared T times phi, uh, that is, is the sinus with a constant. The sinus, so here is the sinus of chi x, okay? And then you can estimate that. So this is a number given, a family or a sequence of numbers that are given. And then you estimate that. So, okay, you cannot estimate everything, but you know, that derivative of the sinus of kx is the cosinus cat k times cosinus of zero. So this is k, okay? 
and the constant that is a square root of two over pi. So here is again a number that depends on k. So what you want to solve, if you want to solve this thing equal to zero, is this integral to be equal to some numbers that you know. So these numbers, I put CK. So since V is something that you can, it's just a notation, let's say, you can modify to V tilde of T equal to V evaluated at capital T minus T. And then what you want to solve is this integral from zero to t of the exponential of minus k squared t times v tilde of t to be equal to this constant c chi that is given, okay? So these terms are given, okay? So this kind, of problem is called a problem of moments. So this is the new thing that you want to solve. Okay, so we have again some results that are like 50 years ago. So for every initial data, so I, here I put L2 of zero pi. In fact, you need, uh, it's better to put H minus one. H minus one is a larger set, but you can do it with uh, in data in L2 of zero pi, okay? You have, you can obtain a control V in L2 of zero T that solves the problem of moments. So. Solving the problem of moments is the same thing that the null boundary control for the one dimensional heat equations. Okay, so I'm going to tell you the idea of the proof. It is not a proof, but just the idea. So the thing I need, so remember that I have uh, to solve This equality, okay? I have to solve this integral from zero to t. The e minus k squared t v tilde dt equal to c k, okay? So I want to solve that. So the thing is the following. I have this family, e2 minus k squared t. And then if I am able to construct a family in L2 of zero t that is by orthogonal to this family of exponentials. So that means if I have PL of t such that when I integrate from zero to t, the exponential of minus k squared t times PL of t, and the, this is the, uh, uh, the del delta KL, the Kronecker delta, so this is one if k is equal to L and zero if k is different from L. Okay, so uh, what uh, Fattorini and Russell prove is that you can obtain this family and moreover, you can uh, exhibit a constant such that the norm of this family 
for you can you can for every epsilon you can show that the norm of the fa this family is less or equal that the constant times the exponential of, of epsilon times k square, then you can define your control in which way just the sum of ck. So remember that what we want to solve is this equality. So the exponential of minus k squared t v tilde t this integral equal to ck. So you can define your control as ck, so the quality you want to solve, time times this family that is orthogonal, orthonormal to the exponential. So you 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 construct your V as a sum of, of this series. Okay. So what are you going to obtain? Because you have this uh, uh, um, chronic or delta, you're going to obtain the thing you need, okay, all the times. And the given bounds, so these bounds give the convergence in L2 of zero T. So this kind of techniques is very useful uh, when you work in the one dimensional setting. And <clears throat> so you will need to study in the case of uh, the, the how, what I want to say, okay. So when you're working in the, uh, for example, heat equation, you need to study the uh, exponentials, so our real exponentials, so you have a family like that, okay? So if you have uh, several equations, so coupled several equations, you have to study, uh, for example, e to minus lambda cat t times e to minus lambda cat t, so polynomials uh, t to the n e minus lambda cat t. So this is for the case in which you have several coupled uh, equations. Okay, so in this situation, you need to. Uh, I don't know if I can, okay. If you want, you need to find a family that are K and L in such a way that when you multiply E minus lambda KJT, this P K L, okay, t to the n are orthonormal, okay? So you integrate from zero to t, and this is going to be the delta in k, n, and l, j, okay? The chronic or delta. So in this situation, okay, this is much more in Turing Kate, but you can obtain some results to control a couple set equation. So this technique is also used for uh, 
when you have imaginary exponentials, okay? And uh, when do you obtain that? When you want to control, so boundary control, control, for example, for the wave equation, you have a similar situation, but now you are going to study e to the r lambda kt. So the wave equation is something like this equal to zero. And again, you want to act on a part of the boundary. You have W of P by T equal to zero. And you have an uh, initial data. And uh, here again, you can ask if you have an exact controllability or a null controllability acting on the boundary. Okay, so if you act on the boundary, so you're going to study now imaginary exponentials in order to solve again a moment problem. And more recently, okay, there is an abstract result um, due to Scott Hansen when you have uh, exponentials that have a real part and an imaginary part. And recently, Tenenbaum and Komornik did a precise estimate when you have this uh, real part and imaginary part. And then you can solve uh, some kind of coupled equations that are an hyperbolic equation with a parabolic equation and you can solve this kind of problems of moments. So I want to see, no, this is not working. So, sorry. So the references that I am giving here are, for example, for couple equations, the results of Amar Kodja, Benatala, Dupe, and Gonzalez Burgos. So for the case of a uh, couple heat equations. I have this result of uh, Amarco Javen Abdallah, Gonzalez Burgos and myself, where we prove so, some minimal time for the null controllability of parabolic systems. And we use this kind of uh, technique with the, a problem of moments. Also, this paper is the same thing. Uh, so, Frank Boyer, you have uh, the numerics. I put the image of the numerics are uh, due to Frank Boyer. So, he has like this kind of Carleman inequalities, but uh, for the discretized equation, it's not an easy paper, I will say. But there you can uh, study the applications to the numerical approximations that are not easy in the parabolic case because you need some stability of the, the numeric approximation. You have uh, this beautiful book from Jean-Michel Coron. Uh, that talks about control and non-linearity. If you go, if you don't just go Google Jean-Michel Coron and go to his webpage, you found there the, the PDF of the book. So it's an open link to everybody. 
okay? And you have, for example, there is the, the part of the transport equation uh, that I presented here is taken from Jean-Michel Colomb book. Also, you have uh, this paper due to Jean-Michel Colomb and Guilleron, uh, where they control three couple uh, heat equations that have cubic nonlinearities and he uses a method, they use a method that is called a return method. So for the approximate controllability of the heat equation, you can find some result, the results of Caroline Fabre, Jean-Pierre Puel and Enrique Suasua. So that's an old paper of 95, but if you are not used to this kind of problems, you can find there the, the, the results, okay, even in LP. Then you have a much more older paper by Fattorini and Russell that they prove the exact controllability theorems for the parabolic equations in the one space dimension. And also a paper of Fattorini and Russell uh, with this kind of solving this kind of problem of moments. Okay, so you have these two papers that are like seminal in the technique that they use. Uh, you have this paper with uh, Fernandez Cara, Gonzalez Burgos, and myself of uh, when you have several um, parabolic coupled equations, you have, if you want to learn global Karleman inequality, so these are not the original papers of Fursikov, Immanuelov, but this paper is very difficult to find, okay? Uh, if you want it, I think I have a, a PDF of, of this, this paper of Fursikov Emanuelov that is the original paper, okay, where Karleman inequalities to control the parabolic equations were introduced, but it's very difficult to find it if, and it's not easy to read it. So I, if you want to learn Karleman inequalities, I suggest you to read this paper of Fernandez Cara and Sergio Guerrero because it is much more clear. Okay, several years after it, so it was now in the understood, better understood. Okay. So I have both of them. If you don't have the possibility to, to have them, please ask me. Here I put also uh, uh, a result of myself with uh, Manuel Gonzalez Burgos for couples parabolic uh, e equations. Uh, you have this paper of Emmanuel of Yamamoto that is um, very useful in several cases when you have, so in, in this case, you have like a, an adjoint equation uh, equal to if zero plus, let's say the, um, okay, let me write it down, is equal to if zero plus the divergence of if one with F one in L two to the N, okay, of omega times zero T, okay? So they did this H minus one estimates, uh, 
So this is the, the negative order is because you have this one is in H minus one, okay? So this kind of paper is uh, very interesting also. Uh, so uh, I have this result with Otarev Kavian proving unique continuation results for systems of parabolic equations. And here you have, so I didn't mention it, but one of uh, the, the, the important results for the uh, null controllability of uh, the heat equations were due to Leboa and Roviano, and the technique is very different from the ones I mentioned here. So these were more or less at the same time that uh, Immanuelov and Yamamoto. So, I, so the paper of Immanuelov and, and, and Fursikov, sorry, Immanuelov, Fursikov, Immanuelov, were in 96 and the paper of Le Borroviano were in 95. So they proved both, both papers proved the null controllability of the heat equation. So they proved this observability inequality that is needed to obtain the null controllability so uh, there were at, at the same time working on the same kind of problems, but uh, this, this paper is not of use when you have, for, for example, uh, an, a heat equation with, uh, if you want to solve an, a semilinear heat equation. Okay, so Le Borroviano's paper is only of use when your coefficients depend on x. So they cannot depend on x. So you cannot linearize this equation with something like that. Okay, so this one is uh, not of use in this situation, but uh, Fursikov Emanuel paper, yes. Okay, so uh, okay, so here you have this very good book of Tuxnak and Weiss talking about the observation and control of four operator semigroups. You found a lot of results inside this book. It's not very easy, but you can find uh, some, some very interesting results um, in it. And you have uh, this uh, more basic book that is the SAPSIC, uh, that is uh, in all these and partial differential equations. And you have also very interesting and well-written book about all these subjects. Okay, so thank you very much for being here. And I think I finished very early, but uh, okay, so I'm done. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, please.